Okay, so this lesson, really all we're going to be doing is taking the shapes that we are already aware of and uh, putting them together. For example, some of you already know how to find the area of a half circle. Or maybe, maybe you know how to find the area of a circle, okay? Or maybe it's a, maybe it's a parallelogram or a trapezoid or a triangle or a square or a rectangle. Yeah, all we're doing in this one is just taking these shapes and combining them. For example, if we were to take a triangle, well, some of you can find the area of that triangle, but if we put a square underneath it, now can you find the area? Uh, just find the area of the triangle first, and you'd find the area of the square. Done. But the book will make this a little bit more tricky. So, for example, you'll see something that looks like this. And some of you realize that all this is is a trapezoid with a half circle on top. Okay, well, that's the same thing. You're just going to find the area of your half circle. And then find the area of your trapezoid. So this slide is just showing you the formulas for a parallelogram, a triangle, a trapezoid, and a circle. So it doesn't look like they'll give you anything really crazy, but uh, maybe they could combine three of them in one. For example, they could say, find the area of this figure. So what do you got up in here? You got uh, like this. And then they just give you some measurements like these. And say this one is the same as a five. And uh, this is uh, five as well. So as you can see, we have a square with a triangle and a semicircle. Now some of you may struggle because you don't know what the radius is or the diameter. Well, it did give it to you, it just gave it to you over here. That distance would be the same as this distance. So that is five, which gives you a radius of two and a half. Additionally, it gave you the base of this triangle right here, up here. So this length is going to be the same as this length, which is the base. Now if it helps you label all those so you can see each one, and then what I would recommend actually is just drawing them separately. So you have that triangle with an altitude or a height of 5, and a base of 5. And you have the square in the middle with the 5 by 5 square. And you got this semicircle over here with a radius of 2.5. Now all you need to do is find the area of these and then add them all together. So, oh, we'll find the area of this square, which would be 5 times 5, length times width, which gives you 25 units squared. And this triangle is going to work the same. Got a right angle there. 5 times 5 is 25, but it's half of that. So it's actually just uh, 25 divided by 2 to give you 12 and a half units squared. And if we find the area of this semicircle using a calculator, we get 7. Point, let's just use 85. It'd be 7.85398. On a calculator, again, I'm just using the actual value of pi because there is a button for it. And I just need to add all three of these together. And that gives me a total of 45.35 units squared. And that would be my final answer. Alright, you look at this one, you'll notice and they've given you first this half circle or semicircle, and then this right triangle with side lengths of 6 and 11 meters 
So the altitude 6, we know that because that's where the right angle is. And uh, the 6 up here tells us that our radius is going to be 3 meters, just solved. And so you can see you'll find the area of the semicircle and the triangle. Just add the two together and you get 47.1 square meters. All right, take a moment and give A a shot. All right, so you may look at this one and think it's a trapezoid, but uh, it kind of is, but really what we're looking at here is uh, this would be a rectangle with part of it missing. So. All right, so we're going to look at this as though it's a full rectangle. So let's say that this part was there. Then what we would have, see, we wouldn't even have to worry about that 13 yet. Okay. Uh, if that was there, then you take 25 times 20, and that gave us, so if it was a full rectangle, we would have 500 square inches. Okay. But the thing is, is this triangle actually is not there. So what we need is that's going to be a right angle because it is a rectangle. But uh, we need this length and this one, which would be the altitude in the base of the triangle, which according to this would be five, five, there we go, five inches. And this one would be seven inches. So how did we get that? Well, let's look. This length is 25. This length should be 25, but it's only 20. So how much is missing from it? Yeah, 5. It's this 5. And what about this other side? Well, that side is 20 inches. This side is 20. But it only shows 13, so 7 of the inches are missing. So we'll find the area of that triangle. Base times the height. 7 times 5. But we do need to divide that by 2 which would give us, yeah, so that's 17 and a half, 17 and a half inches squared. Well, now that we have that, we're just going to take the amount of the whole rectangle and subtract this amount that was missing from it. So that gives us, turns out it's 482 and a half square inches. Done. Now there is a different way that we can do this, is we can separate this shape into two different shapes, which we did in the last one, but this one's just going to work slightly different, okay? So let's take a look at this, all right? Now there's a couple places that I can cut this. Let's say that I wanted to cut this along this line, okay? Well now what I have is, this is now 20 inches, and this one would be 5 inches. But the thing is, is I made this a square. All right. And this is now a trapezoid. However, I can also cut this along this line. Now what I have still is a trapezoid up in here. And then I have a square down in here. Again, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, you get to choose, which is the nice thing about math. So this one is now uh, 25. This is a 25 by 13 inch rectangle, which would give us 325 square inches. And this other one, this is a trapezoid. Okay, you got two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. So this is going to give us, we got uh, this 20, this is 25, this is a 7, okay. So let's uh, take the 20 plus the 25, and it's going to give us a 45, I'll multiply that by 7, and finally divide by 2, and that gives us to a nice 157.5 square inches. So I'm just going to take that and add it to the rectangle 
area. And that's going to give me uh, just what we thought it would, right? 482.5 square inches. All right, there's a word problem, but uh, the words actually, none of these matter, okay? All we need to do is figure out the area of this pitcher. So what do we see here? We've got this trapezoid right here. And we've got this parallelogram right here. And it tells us the height of this parallelogram is uh, 2.5 feet. So we got a height of 2.5 feet. And it's got a length of 6 foot. And this is 3 feet here for a trapezoid. 3 feet there. Giving us the right angle. And uh, yeah, it looks like this was uh, supposed to be 2 feet right there. But it doesn't say. So let's just say it's 2 feet. Okay, well, let's find the area of this trapezoid. We got the 2 plus 3, which is 5. We'll multiply that by the height of the trapezoid, 3. And finally divide by 2. So that's going to give us 7.5 square feet. And then over here, we've got, uh, this is the altitude of this parallelogram. we got 2.5 times 6. So that'll give us uh, 12, 15. So 15 square feet. Now let's just go ahead and add these, giving us 22 and a half square feet. Done. All right, take a moment and give B a shot. All right, for B, it's the same idea. We've got two different shapes. Some people are going to look at that triangle cut in half and say that it's three shapes, but uh, it doesn't matter, okay? So, let's go ahead and split these up. So I've got this rectangle on the bottom, and it's 12 foot by 15 foot. And then we've got the top, which is this triangle up here. Like this is four foot there, and this is 15 foot there. So how do I know that this length here is 15 foot? Now, since this is a rectangle, this side has to be equal or congruent or the same length as that side. Now, let's start with the rectangle because it's easy. Finding the area, we'll take the length times the width, and that gives us 180 square foot. Now, let's look at the triangle. We've got the altitude times the base or base times height but we do need to divide that by two and that gives us 30 square foot I'll well, just add these together that will be 210 foot squared all right so on this part it's just saying that uh, it's going to shade a region so let's look up in here, we'll make uh, eh, let's make some kind of rectangular object like this one. Well, notice it's all shaded, which is nice and pretty. But if we take a section of this and unshade it, then we say this is a circle. Uh, now find the area that's shaded in. Okay, well, notice uh, now instead of adding the area of these shapes, what we're just going to do is take the area of this large rectangle length times the width, which is the area, and we would subtract the area of that circle, which is just going to be pi times the radius squared. And that would give me the area of just the shaded region. So notice this example is very much like the one we did earlier, where we just treat this entire uh, shape as a rectangle, then we just uh, subtract these little triangles. All right, so notice on this one, we've got this big rectangle. Then what we'll need to do is subtract the area of this smaller rectangle. So we find the area of the entire rectangle. Then we find the area of the unshaded area and just subtract it off right here. All right, so what they want you to do on C is to 
find the area of this as though it were some type of trapezoid. Even though they didn't put this little angle there. Well, as it turns out, we don't really even need that because we can find the length of the base of this triangle. You just take the 150 and subtract the 120, and you have 30 yards there. And you can know that this length here is 50 because of this one, okay? So you just find the area of the, that triangle and then add the area of that rectangle and you'll be good. All right, give one and two a shot as well and uh, I'll give you the answers here in a second. So there you go. Now, don't forget to label these.